Hello, everyone. Since this is either a highlight, a standalone book, or the first episode in a series, I'm jumping in to remind you what the rules are for this podcast. First rule is no real people stories. That means that any details from our own lives are merely anecdotal. We do not read books about real people, and we are not reading historical fiction. The second rule is that we are basing our analyses off of how the author treats characters and what they put them through. We are not judging the accuracy of the trauma, the accuracy of any actual conditions that may be portrayed, nor the authenticity of a character's reaction to that trauma or that particular condition. This podcast is for entertainment purposes only. The hosts are not trained professionals, and their opinions come solely from personal experience. In this episode, we discuss fictional depictions of trauma and violence that may not be suitable for all audiences. Please take care of yourselves. Specific content warnings for each episode can be found in the show notes. Events in the media are discussed in approximate order of escalation. This episode contains spoilers. And I'm Robin, and this episode on Books That Burn, we are discussing Sassanac by Anne McCaffrey and Elizabeth Moon. From the publisher, here's our blurb. Old enough to be used, young enough to be broken. Sassanac was 12 when the raiders came. That made her just the right age, or so the slavers thought. But Sassy turned out to be a little different from your typical slave girl. Maybe it was her unusual physical strength. Maybe it was her friendship with the captured fleet crewman. Maybe it was her spirit. Uh, She bided her time and watched for her moment. When it finally came, she escaped. And then the blurb spoils the end of the book. So uh, (laughs) we're going to stop there. (laughs) That's definitely a choice. Yeah, it... um... Uh, Older books tend to do that a lot. (laughs) Because by the time someone's writing this blurb, the book is at least more known than if it's something that just came out. Uh, Right. So especially for reissues. Yeah, like, you know, they'll refer to awards that happened like way later or spoil like the whole plot just on the back. Um sometimes books do that on their first issue but anyway uh that's most of the blurb for sassanac and for our first topic we have abandonment um our structure is going to be a little different because we're going to have sassanac and then somebody else and then sassanac again which we don't usually do yeah usually we try to go minor character main character main character but we thought that this made more sense for this book so this is also like an interesting take on abandonment um this is going to have some spoilers because it is a people stops being in sassanac's life situation sometimes that's death a lot of times that's death so if you don't want the deaths of a bunch of characters potentially to get randomly spoiled i'm not sure who's we're gonna mention necessarily um oh i (laughs) I don't want to give the list (laughs) that's a spoiler don't list here's all the ones we are going to spoil because then that just that just undoes the whole thing um also apologies for the random thuds that i don't know if nicole will be able to get rid of because (laughs) grimoire has decided that when i'm recording is the best time to play with a mouse yeah hi grimoire yes you are a mighty huntress yes you are oh i'm leaving that meow in um all right but sassanac uh when she is not yet a mighty huntress the first big abandonment that happens and when we say abandonment for this one we do mean kind of like emotionally and like sassanac's experience of it 
Because except for arguably one of them, but that's more tenuous, none of these people meant to leave her. Right. Um, and Sassanac okay. gets... Yeah, maybe you're the one who've read this okay. a lot. So Sassanac has uh, gone through some things that we will cover in our third topic. Uh, and is is struggling in a lot of this book with feeling like she is a left alone over and over and over and over and over again. Sometimes she is left alone because she was taken away from her family. Sometimes she is left alone because people die. A couple of times she is left alone because people just can't handle associating her with trauma, even though she didn't do it. She was there and she also was affected by it and so they just can't be around her and then a couple of times um it's more of a betrayal thing but it's somebody that she you know assumed was fine and then they're not (laughs) um and then uh, one time somebody kind of decided to leave and then died while they were gone somebody went and intentionally went on a suicide run yeah and didn't come back. Yeah. And we should be clear, this is a space navy, space military book, so uh they intentionally went out in combat to try to get taken out and apparently have been doing that a large part part of their career, but Sassanac didn't know that and so she was really really close to this person and she really depended on them both professionally and personally and then they just left and didn't really even say goodbye. Yeah, like, she'd known them in one of, like, their most stable configurations is kind of the <laughs> impression that I got. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, like, you know, the time when uh, lowered stress and things are mostly going fine, and then they stopped being fine in a bunch of ways. Uh, and to cope with that, this person did what they always do, which is apparently um, see if they're going to die, uh, which is a heck of a way to deal with that. But it, it does leave Sassanac, I think, kind of feeling like they like the I don't know, like knew they were not coming back but didn't say goodbye all the way like i like it doesn't dwell on i mean she yeah it doesn't really talk about it a lot but there's there's a lot of like uh i mean she misses the funeral yeah and and we don't really get a lot of it other than oh well i was busy (laughs) really (laughs) you know there's a there's a, a a sense of like well you know she was in the area and then just the funeral just kind of happened without her there's there's a lot of like there's a couple of conversations of her trying to justify to another crew member what was happening. And that person kind of calling the the character who dies out and saying like, no, this had nothing to do with you. They've been like this the entire time I've known them. It was going to happen eventually. And she kind of has to grapple with that. And, and this is, you know, just the latest in a, a long book of, of people leaving people dying people never coming back and you know there's there's it's kind of it's not really dwelled on necessarily any more than the others but it's just it's another moment when she's all alone again (laughs) yeah like it it happens later in the book and so by the time it's that when it's like oh great another one (laughs) which makes it feel i think a little bit weightier in the narrative than the other ones even those certain ones like the very first one is i think on most scales worse and more impactful for more of her life um right but so this is now the point where we're going to start naming names and giving real spoilers yes uh so that's your intro (laughs) to the topic you don't want that um, you don't want spoilers, then skip ahead. So the character we've been talking about is Huron. Mm-hmm. And he was her second in command and her lover for a while until his death. Um, and initially, she I'm just going to kind of go through the litany here. 
Initially, she loses her immediate family when they are killed. She and loses her whole community and her I whole community, but mention. like, yeah, <laughs> everybody, everybody she is around and close to on a daily life, on a daily uh, basis. Then uh, she loses for a moment the protector mentor character that she had for a while um, when she is rescued and no one else is. Then she kind of gets she gets him back when he is when he is pulled out when Abe is is pulled out. Um, and then discovers that her childhood best friend who survived capture and slavery doesn't want to be friends anymore and doesn't want to talk to her, doesn't want to see her because, because they were captured together, because they were both enslaved at the same time, that person associates her with that treatment and she just can't do it. Yeah, like, uh, Sassanac has become a trigger for her. Yes. Especially because Sassanac is, there. there's different ways in real life and in fiction that characters use, people use to process trauma. And Sassanac is very much a do-something-about-it processor. <laughs> and this other character is very much of a avoidance, don't-touch-it kind of a processor. So they're, they're totally opposites. And Sassanac is reaching out to her best friend and saying you know you know come with me essentially and this this person just turns away and she never sees her again yeah and then loses abe her mentor turned adopted father dies it is murdered but you know still dies and then her lover and then some of her crewmates and the, you know just over and over and over again yeah and like yeah and, uh... And I, I was saying, like, unlike a lot of other abandonment, but I think a lot of times ab- abandonment is one of those tropes where whether or not the person meant to leave, um, it still hits the person who is left. Um, and it just kind of like, I mean, the degrees to which it plays out, out differently are as varied from the reason as they are from just who the person is and how they react to it. Um, Right. Yeah. Abandonment is hard because it's not really, and I mean, this is in line with a lot of things we talk about it and on this podcast, but it's not about the person leaving. It's about the person who was left. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't really matter why they're gone. They could be intentional. They could have died. They could have, you know, lost their memory. Like it, it doesn't matter if they're if they're gone and they don't want anything to do with you anymore, or they can't have anything to do with you anymore. It's it's kind of the same. Yeah, yeah. So, in terms of like the authors setting this up and making this happen, um, I think part of it. Like, especially, like, the the early ones are kind of a side effect of other choices that are made in the narrative. Like, if these are pirates that are going after planets, they're not going to take Sassanac and leave the rest of her family alive. Like, that's just not going to be how it works. And so for that one, abandonment feels like a little bit more of a side effect of other decisions. Um yeah but like with so. the f- the friend who refused to reconnect um and then the series of people who die and also the fact that Sassanac like explicitly reacts to these especially once it's been several um as abandonment and feeling like she's left all alone like that's kind of what turns it from people died in this book to this particular character feels abandoned. Oh, because we've discussed other books with yeah. as high of a body count for similar <laughs> or higher reasons <laughs> where abandonment wouldn't be appropriate as a trope because that's not how the main character took it. I should mention too. I had kind of mentioned this when we were setting our 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 notes up. Uh, Sassanac also has family left, has relatives and an extended family on on other places and other settlements and other colonies and other major 
civilization in the, in this book and she explicitly does not even tell them i believe that she's alive uh like throughout the decades people are yeah. like hey did you ever connect with the rest <laughs> of your family you know kind of assuming she would have tried right and she's, and and she's like no she immediately is just like just shuts them down entirely no and this is not a conversation um mm-hmm. And and we we see and this is a major end of book spoiler unless you have read book one in the series or book two depending on how you tackle the series. Um, she re- she eventually reconnects with a relative, but this is a relative who was who never knew her during her lifetime. This is a relative who was cryogenically frozen during her entire childhood. So. She explicitly reaches out to the one person who would never be able to tell how she has changed. Mm-hmm. But even then, it's it's, it's very at a distance. She didn't. Yeah, she reaches out once they're there, but right. she didn't like attempt. She didn't go to where they were frozen on right. purpose to get them. And she knew um, she knew who they were since she was a child. Like this is not mm-hmm. new. But yeah, that's a good point. She didn't. She was not the one who reached out technically. <laughs> Yeah. On to major Curald and racism. So this is a setting specific version of racism. It is based on the gravity of one's home planet um, because of how that make survival more likely if you have certain uh, naturally occurring adaptations to the increased gravity. It is not trying well, uh, to copy real world racism, but I think it, it it seems like it was picked to be um, like as nonsensical as like racism that's based on how close your ancestors were to the equator. But it, it's like it's it it shows up in ways that are specific to what's going on and unique for the setting. Do you know for sure that it is natural and not artificial? I will say actually, I don't remember. I don't. I don't know that it seems like it's not getting picked in every generation. I don't know if it started out being partly artificial um or not but there some people are born as um throwbacks where they're that's the term used in the book where they are right heavy but that has nothing but, to do with yeah no no, no. like or, i'm saying yeah. uh, people's current lived experience is not as far as we are shown that they that their genes were fussed with i don't know whether or not um they did something to the original colonists. So the I don't only, know, but the, the, the only, way they were talking about it in the book didn't lead me to that. That wasn't the impression that I had, but I could have been mistaken. The only reason I'm saying we don't know is because it's not, mm-hmm. explicitly, it's not explicitly stated, but the heavy world concept is partially introduced in a conversation about which species in the book do genetic tinkering. That is the uh, thing. So... Okay. I'm not te- I'm not saying it's artificial. I'm just saying we need to not say it's not artificial. <laughs> That's all. Okay. Okay. But but it is still it is it doesn't matter genetically altered or just natural evolution. It does not matter. Um it it, it is still I guess I was almost going to say fantasy racism, sci- sci-fi racism. <laughs> yeah, it's sci-fi racism and it it is based on the gravity of one's home planet. Um, kind of, and yeah, kind of, yeah, like kind of, just yeah. He- heavy worlders do better on planets with a higher gravity up to a certain point. Mm-hmm. Um, but the mm, the genetics the- of it are not affected by the gravity they have. If right, that makes it's sense. just whether or not they're going to thrive. And in some places where the gravity is heavy enough, it is whether they're going to survive. Right. Um. But then, yeah. So like. It's the light worlders prejudice towards heavy worlders is made more complicated, but not excused um, by the some heavy worlders having the practice of um, 
killing infants that are born that will not be able to survive in their gravity or could That's survive mentioned as a th- yeah. or could survive but are not do not express all of the gen- don't have all of the genetic expression mm-hmm. um so uh infants who are are built less stereotypical so to speak or less robustly yeah i was trying to think of the right like way to describe the difference um I mean, I mean, there's, there's a. I'm not going to try and list all of the genetic markers because I don't, I don't remember them off the top of my head. But uh, essentially, they can tell from infancy whether or not a child is going to express the majority of those those traits. And mm-hmm. sometimes infants are killed if they wouldn't survive anyway. But also sometimes they're just straight up killed because yeah. they're not, <laughs> they're not the, they're not all that they could be essentially. They're not what their parents wanted. Yeah. And it's also like a little hard for us to like. We it, we do get a lot of that from like heavy worlders themselves and from like pretty reliable sources on that. That's what's going on. Mm-hmm. But there's also like a pretty big mix of just light worlder prejudice about heavy worlders that shows up. Yeah. Um, that I don't want to accidentally mix in there in the descriptions. Oh, yeah, um, definitely, for sure. But yeah. but the the treatment of the children comes from heavy worlders talking about right. their societies. So Yeah. Yeah, the the so okay, so moving on from what it actually is. <laughs> yep. Um yep. the char- the characters that we see in the book who are uh either heavy worlders or of heavy world descent because we have a mm-hmm. couple of like like genetically heavy worlders but they're not those genetic mutations don't come out so they're they're indistinguishable from from light worlders who just they really they they go through a lot of this treatment in this book we don't now to be clear we do not see active on screen like um physical attacks and things like that but what we what we do see is just discrimination or hints of discrimination in things like the military ranks and things that what you can qualify for we see uh we see treatment of uh characters between each other where you have a light worlder assuming that a heavy worlder is less intelligent or less capable you have um we have discrimination in a way that does kill (laughs) but not Mm -hmm. not because we have a character attacking one another but because we have Heavy wielders who are handed jobs that will that have a higher mortality rate because they're ass- it's assumed that that's your job basically. Uh, we also have a couple of examples, not on screen so to speak, but we have characters talking about examples of there's of heavy roll of heavy wielders who have more technical based jobs, but but then are handed grunt work. That really shouldn't be their... That's not really their job, but they're handed it anyway because of their genetic makeup. So. Um, yeah. Like yeah. Someone looks at them and is like, oh, you should do that job. Yeah. Um, like, you, you, it's ha- literally... And I don't... This may not be exactly what it is in the book, but it's, it's, the, it's the same thing. It's handing your neurosurgeon a pipe and telling them to go fix your plumbing that may fall on you and crush you. <laughs> like, that's not their job. <laughs> you know? They are trained for something else. So. Yeah. Uh, but Major Curls, we should talk about him. So the the characterization, we see this character kind of having to navigate f- three different things all at the same time. Uh, the moment that I want to talk about, that's why I suggested this topic, mm-hmm. is because we we have a situation on Sassanac's ship at one point where there is a saboteur there is a poisoner who is may he's trying to take out some of the crew and they're trying to figure out there's a couple of different possibilities here they're trying to figure out whether or not this person is working with the pirates that they're chasing or working by themselves or working with another group like they don't know Mm -hmm. and uh it turns out well i shouldn't even say that before they know who it is, there is an assumption by the light worlders or some of the light worlders on the ship that it has to be a heavy welder because of course it is. 
Right, because, you know, no light worlder would do something right. like that. Right. And it is and it is an important, it's not just worth pointing out, it is an, an important moment in the book because uh, when the the poisoning really happens because Major Curald is the Marine commander, a heavy worlder, and is poisoned. Yes. <laughs> like, he is one of the ones who it affects very badly. Uh, because not not everybody drank enough of it. It was put in their coffee. Not everybody drank enough of it to really like be hospitalized. A couple of people just got sick or threw it threw it up, and then it was gone and it was fine. But several people ingested enough to like take them out for a couple days to a week, and Major Carald was one of those. So you have this whole situation where where you know the the crew is not even pitted against each other. They're trying to pit themselves against each other. And uh, Sassanac is trying to figure out how to handle this in both with regards to like safety for the people who are being accused and just safety to the crew in general as they figure out who the poisoner is. Major Curl is trying to balance um, physical safety for everyone as well. And the safety of the heavy wielders just in general on the ship and do his job <laughs> as the Marine yeah. commander and as basically as Sassanac's security chief in this moment. We don't actually get, and I don't remember in this universe, in these books, if we, if we have like a different security commander over, but really the, the Marine commander is it because they're all in the military. You know, they don't have a designated security person. They have the security team. Right. For the ship. But as far as like, you know, a physical person, that's that's it. It's the Marine commander. Or if it's not, we don't get another um, another person specified. Yeah. And so like with all of this, there end up being several instances where he has prepared what he's going to say based on what Sassanac demands, because he assumes that she's going to demand something. Right. And generally, he, with good reason, based on stuff that's happened to him and other heavy wielders before, he assumes that she's going to demand that they lock up all the heavy wielders or, like, investigate all of them. Right. Or do something that treats them as though they're one all guilty of the poisoning <laughs> right um until they figure out which one or several of them are responsible for it um and like the he's got to navigate that like as an officer right like where being in where by his like literal job description speaking for all the heavy worlders is not his job Right, but but they are the looking ships, at him to, to right. Do that. He is, as far as I'm aware, the highest ranking heavy mm. welder, or at least the highest ranking who works most closely with Sassanac. Yeah. I, I don't think he's the highest ranking. He is he is the highest ranking marine. Um, okay, okay, yeah, yeah. He is the highest ranking marine, so he is the highest of his uh, command track. His well, not command, but his his. Uh, I'm losing the word for the thing. <laughs> he has gone the highest of anyone who started out where he could. But his yeah. his his his, orga- his bit of the organizational structure. Yeah, his his uh, command track. Sure, uh, I'll think of the right term later. Uh, but he he is the highest ranking person of his section of the ship. Um, I don't think he's the highest ranking heavy welder, technically speaking. But he is in charge of his group, and the other the other heavy welders look up to him. Um, and he does work very closely with the commander as the head of the Marines in, on the ship. So uh, all of those things mean that he has the social weight, the military hierarchy weight, and just the, I mean, he has the confidence of his fellow crewmen. So uh, there's but two also- times, there's there's two times in this situation where he is prepared and he has already talked to the other other heavy worlders and they have decided essentially to 
not just give in to what Sassanek wants, but they've already figured out a plan in case they are all in danger. Uh, there's one mm-hmm. moment where Sassanek goes up to to work with him, and he says, essentially, we've all talked. We will go into custody. And she said, no, <laughs> that's not going to happen. But he, but he is prepared to essentially get as many of them out of this as one, in one piece as he can. So... And in, like, a structure that seems like it's all about, like, knowing exactly your job and doing it very well, but also, like, not trying to do other people's jobs. He's picking up a job that has to happen in order for the heavy worlders as a group to be safe. Right. That right. on paper shouldn't be a thing he has to do. But it is because of, like, because of all the prejudice against them. It was interesting reading it because, like, we have, like, Sassanak's perspective, and as soon as she joins the fleet, she pretty quickly ends up friends with some heavy worlders, and she also ends up friends with, like, this um, this other alien race. And so it, it I don't know, just... The Gelf. Yeah, the Gelf. Um, with how it was treated, she is so... Um, she ends up I'm sorry. I, I gave the wrong least, sci-fi series. The Wefts. The Wefts. Okay, I was like, I didn't think it started with a G. Okay, the Weft. Um So she ends up being very friendly with them and like not having an issue with them being different from her so seamlessly that to me when I was reading it when because this was my, you know, introduction to the setting. Right. When these other characters are like, oh my goodness, you're friends with heavy worlders. Why are you with the weft? Aren't they weird? And she's like, no. I'm like, was I supposed to think they were weird? Because I was just going with Sassanax's perspective on this. And I, I, I liked how the story is not Sassanax unlearns racism. Like, it's right. not. It's, it's not. It's not that. It's not that at all. <laughs> like... To whatever degree she had to do that, the reader is not subjected to. It, no, we are. Is what I would say. We we or go through everything not, she goes so, through. Uh, she, I would say so. It's not much. It's like, not. It's, it's whoa! This is weird, and I have to get used to this concept, and also not feel nervous or scared because you look human and then you're not. But it's not. Yeah, it's not explicit racism. It's. Oh, I have to figure out how to be respectful in the situation and how to treat you well because I don't know what's going on. But she mm-hmm. gets over that very, very quickly. But it's just it's a physical it's a physical. Oh, no, you're shape shifting from human to something else. OK, can I shake your hand? That'll make it better. Oh, yeah, and then no, she's OK. No, but we do go yeah. through what she goes through. Sorry, I meant to say with the heavy worlders, that isn't really. Oh, yeah, we don't we don't with- see anything on screen. Right. With the weft, there is a little bit of a curve, but that is partly because they end up looking completely different um, almost instantaneously, which was a thing that she had to adjust to. And then it's like, oh, okay. Right. You can do that. Great. But like with the heavy worlder specifically, it it seems like maybe she was captured young enough that she didn't end up with a bunch um of those prejudices well she also whatever degree she was exposed to them as someone who was enslaved she the kinds of language that people used when they were um being racist against the heavy worlders heavily overlapped with language that was used uh about her as a slave and that made her uh, not like people who would say things like that yeah she was pretty immediately she was explicitly um uh, I don't. I don't know if she actually worked with them, but mm-hmm. kept alongside heavy worlders who were also there as in the slave pens. Um, so her, I guess, so called exposure to them was as a fellow captive. Yeah, and then yeah, she gets out, and people are using similar language, and that's that's a no go. <laughs> but I, I liked Major Carol. He, uh... yeah, he's he's good. He's good character. On to Sassanac and enslavement. 
so almost the first thing that happens in the book is that Sassanac is captured by pirates and enslaved. Also, they're they're planet pirates, so it's not like this was something they were expecting in the way you might. It's <laughs> like, oh, there's just pirates nearby, and they come by every summer, and we hide. <laughs> right? Like it's no. not that kind of situation. Like the the scales of distances are literally astronomical, and right. there was no reason for them to expect danger. Um, uh, I, can I add on to that? Yeah. This is also how this is not an unknown thing. And the Mm -hmm. colonists explicitly have drills that include what happens if we have a pirate attack. So it's not like a thing they're expecting. It is a thing they're trying to be prepared for. Right. I more meant that Sassanac is a very small child. This. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's it's not like they do this drill every summer or something. It's like to the degree to which she's involved in these drills. It's not. Because the pirates will totally oh, definitely right, right, right. be here. Right. It is because generally speaking, we need to be able to have a coherent and quick uh, response to danger. Yeah, absolutely. Um, they have they have uh, implied drills for a lot of things. This is just one of them. Yeah. But when she's captured, um, one of the things that happens is they make everybody that they're taking uh, dispose of all the bodies of everybody that they are not taking. And she ends up realizing partway through carrying it that she's holding like her sister's body. Right. And like that, that is, I think it's a moment moment that (laughs) really like sets, it really like sets the tone of the book. Like, we're not going to have a ton of gore, but we're it, not shying away from the reality of of death. Can I? Can um, I? Uh, yeah, it, it's almost it's almost fridge horror as the character experiences it. Yes. Oh, oh, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a lot of oh no, this is happening, <laughs> like over and over. Yeah. Um. And then with with her enslavement um, in the process of being um, sold and trained and sold, um, she's sold like several times, but she ends up getting um, near this other this other slave called Abe, who tells her how he is from the fleet and going back to like our earlier topic of abandonment, you know, once you're fleet, you will never be alone again. Yeah, really should have mentioned mantra. that during, during <laughs> the abandonment section. I completely forgot. Anyway. So I didn't even think with, of it. <laughs> yeah. Like being fleet is a kind of a counter to this feeling of being abandoned because now that she's fleet, she'll never be alone again. Anyway, Abe is the one who like tells her about all this. And she's at least the third person that he has told about Fleet and embedded some stuff mentally in so that if she finds anyone who is Fleet, she can get spe- this some specific information to them in order to be rescued um, and take the pirates down in some way. Um, so to Abe, she's just like yet another attempt that he's making and he has no uh, idea whether yeah. this will work it, out. It's not um, it's not like that detached though. He does oh, care no, no, no. about her and he does care about I mean he cares about all the other slaves in general but like you know it's not random. <laughs> I meant more um there's no guarantees involved oh, when yeah, they for are sure. meeting and when he's training her And she only kind of, like, he said what Fleet is, but she doesn't, like, get it, I think, very well. It at least isn't explained in a way that let me understand what Fleet was until she joined. Right. Um, Because I didn't, when they said Fleet, I didn't realize immediately, oh, it's the Space Navy. Oh. Like, (laughs) it wasn't wasn't anywhere near that concrete um, for me to realize um which is why i say it wasn't uh, right. detailedly described up until then but um 
for like I think it's it's the first either fifth or quarter of the book like it it ends up being um, a significant yeah. but not overwhelming chunk of the book is her being enslaved and then ending up um getting in ending up in contact with the fleet when they take uh, a vessel that she's on and so she's able to get this information and get Abe out and then um he adopts her but the that that's relatively small section of the book which over time becomes an increasingly small portion of her life deeply deeply affects her like we mentioned like even it affected um it affected her attitude on both heavy worlders and the way in which people are racist to heavy worlders um robin we'll i have that a little bit i have bad news for your estimations Oh no, was I wrong? Is it more of the book or less of the book? <laughs> so my my book has 333 pages for the story. Mm-hmm. 29 until she is free. That's 10%. That's less than 10% of the book. It's less than 10% of the book. Oh my goodness. But I it makes an trying... impact. It's really well written. <laughs> I was trying to not um, downplay it. I was like, there's <laughs> no way it's that little. I was like, no, the fifth it, or it's, fourth or something. It's written really well. Mm-hmm. It makes a huge impact on the reader and well, the that story. Even includes, that even includes like the brief bit before the pirate show up, yep. which can't be more than a couple of pages, but well, it is there. Let me check. For how long? Oh, no. Did I underestimate that? She is captured on page 13. Oh my god. <laughs> 16 pages? Of- 16 pages. For everything. Oh For my everything. Goodness. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. So there's definitely <laughs> hey, an we, outsized we emotional made it our, impact. <laughs> we made it our main character main topic. Yeah. No, there's, yeah. there's absolutely this outs- this appropriately outsized uh, emotional impact on her. Um also, like, it's one of those things where, because, like, this book covers decades of her life. It covers them as, like, um, a lot of detail in discrete periods of her life. And then hazy recaps of the time in between whenever we see her again next. Right. So, don't worry. Like, it, it's not blurs of detail or, or no. something. It's It's just... We see her now, uh, and then later, and then also some more later, and then later. And, but it keeps coming up because that's, at least for the people around her, like, that's the kind of thing where they're like, oh, yeah, didn't that happen to you? Isn't that your backstory? Oh, yeah, that's the one thing I know about you person I'm meeting <laughs> for the first time. Um, And so she's sensitive to people bringing that up for obvious reasons because they're like oh yeah that's that one fact and she's like that is a deep well of a scarring and extremely traumatic experience that i don't really want to talk about now or perhaps ever um please uh know literally any other thing about me please um (laughs) yeah gradually happens less and less but it ends up leading to this moment when um she meets a relative uh, that we mentioned previously in the abandonment section. She meets this relative and this relative for excellent plot reasons has no idea and asks where her parents are or where her fa- the rest of her family is for good plot reasons. And Sassanac right. has to tell this person what happened and narratively, like, it's been a while since someone has asked Sassanek, hey, aren't you that one person? <laughs> um, which I think makes it hit a little bit more. Yeah, I, I think that scene is not funny, but kind of funny. Uh, 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 because um, you can, you could, there's the reactions of her other uh enlisted members in the background like oh no <laughs> oh no you said the thing like you nope don't do that anything else please yeah 
Anything else? I mean, that's mostly it. It's 16 yeah. pages. <laughs> yeah, it's 16 pages, but it sure felt like way more of, of the book. <laughs> um, and it, it, I, I think like talking about like how the authors portrayed it and mm-hmm. how much detail they had, uh, the answer is not a lot of specifics, but where they do have it, they do talk more about her reaction and also kind of like the fact that this is what is happening to her um with her being moved around and being sold and that, those kinds of things right um it yeah spend way more with her living with this um than with the actual description of it i think it works Man, that movie was excellent. It really was. Totally blew my expectations away. I know, right? Now I really want to tell everyone about it. But I'm not sure how. Yeah. If only there was a podcast dedicated to reviewing films and discussing the latest news and trailers on upcoming films. That would be nice. Yes, for sure. And we can call it The Senegai Show. (laughs) What? No, it will be called Real Movie Critic Unleashed. Uh, No, how about Senegai featuring Real Movie Critic? Uh, how about the Real Movie Critic and his sidekick, the Senegai? CG and RMC. RMC and CG. The Real Movie Critic versus the Senegai. Only a certain POV.com. Or wherever you get your podcasts. You're going down, critic. Bring it on, guy. On to the wrap-up and ratings for the gratuity rating for Abandonment in Sassanac. What are you thinking? Uh, man... So it depends on whether we're viewing abandonment as her reaction or right. what happened to make people be gone. And I think <laughs> we need to view I think, it as her reaction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Otherwise, it's not fair and it's too much baggage for this topic. Um, yeah, because it, it goes from either maybe moderate to like torture porn almost just from the sheer... We see... Well, no, I guess we don't see them die. It's not torture porn. It would no, be... Okay, it's, so it's either moderate or severe. I think... I, I would argue moderate. Yeah, I think I think moderate. Um, Because she's very deeply affected. But like, yes. just keeping that Deep, separate from deeply, why they're not there. Deeply and repetitively effective. Yes. I, I do want to say, since we brought up the topic of, like, torture porn as a possible rating, that this is not that kind of book. Writ, writ large right. for how it does things it's just not um right. it it tends to make implicit or with sparse details things that in other books of his genre and publishing year would have been more explicit and and um, author and author yeah uh i mean arguably for both um for both of them yeah both of because we i mean we did pax and Arian, which has mm-hmm. an entire literal torture scene for yeah, like two chapters. Is, if you're hesitant, because this is our first time of repeating an author with a different uh, thing, and you're like, ah, I remember your discussion of Pax and Is <laughs> it like that? No, it's not like that. Um, yeah. I, I In my experience... There's some stylistic things where I'm like, oh yeah, Elizabeth Moon did this, but it's not... Yeah. It is not like Pax. In my general experience, Elizabeth Moon's sci-fi tends to have like really good like care in that type of area mm-hmm. um but fantasy wise she gets a lot more explicit and i don't know why <laughs> i don't know yeah. what the difference is but yeah anyways uh yeah i i think i would argue moderate yeah i'm good with it being moderate um racism um uh, severe I, actually, this is definitely severe um 
because there are characters ready to get characters killed on nothing other than racist on on screen they did something yeah 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 um yeah uh enslavement severe Um, yeah i'd say severe there are more severe depictions of enslavement but this still is enough to be severe especially the early scenes especially because it it lasts the effects of it ripple through the whole book kind of like abandonment in that way but it's a lot more there's a lot more stuff (laughs) yeah but again not torture porn um right as few details as possible to I, get it across, I think. But we, that'll go into our care rating. I was going to say, we talked about it in the topic, but mm-hmm. the depict, depiction of it is only 16 pages in the small soft uh, paperback edition. Mm-hmm. And like, I, I feel like if it had gone into a lot more detail, it may have gotten there. Yeah. Well, but uh, but that's, to be fair, we also rate torture porn as being like, you're intended to... Like, it's depicted in a way that's supposed to be, like, interesting or good somehow or enjoyable. Yeah. And, like, that that's not these authors. Um, it definitely no, could have been worse. for this series. Yeah. yeah. Um, all right. Is the trauma integral, interchangeable, or irrelevant? Mm. Okay. Abandonment? I actually think Maybe interchangeable. That- I think it's irrelevant because really? the main thing that turns abandonment into a topic is Sassanac being upset about it and using the language of abandonment to describe what is otherwise a bunch of unrelated things that happen to mm. occur. So you think if her family lives and if Abe lives and if these other people live and no, they're no, no, still no, no, there no. and they're I- in her life... That's I that think I think, the plot. She, I think that if she didn't think of it as them leaving her, it wouldn't change the plot. Now, if for okay, you that, that doesn't make any sense to me <laughs> because <laughs> that's because confusing. As the way we talked about it, the abandonment isn't necessarily the specific things, but it's okay. Cl- I want a bunch of them I, w- I have a counter. She th- okay, sure. I have a counter. If a character is assaulted and moves on with their life. Okay, it's not less of a thing and it's yeah. okay. Okay, I see what you mean. Trauma is not less of a thing just because it affects you differently. Okay. I just I one of the things we had discussed is that her using the language of abandonment for what is arguably a series of coincidences mm. is part of what made this be the topic. Mm, no, but I because do it, take it, your it, point. Culmin- it culminates in her being alone and depending on herself. It's not, okay. it's not that she th- has certain words to describe it. It's that she, the people she is close to are perpetually gone. Okay. And it does so affect that's... how she treats the people who come after. And that affects the plot. That's fair. Um, then I do think interchangeable. Yeah, I'm okay with interchangeable. Um, okay. Um, racism. Okay, this one is definitely interchangeable. It affects, <laughs> or do you think irrelevant? Oh. So, like... I don't know. Uh, I... It, it could have been... I mean, it could have been, especially when we already have like literal aliens, like it could have right. been, it could have been xenophobia. Um, and if you want to argue that that's uh, not a significant enough difference I, I, I in this think, case. I think, I think that's could, the same thing been. with a different target is my argument there. Okay. I don't um, think that's really actually I, a thing we can say. Well, <laughs> also enough of this, there's enough like conspiracy stuff going on that it didn't necessarily need the heavy world or light world or divide as a catalyst in order for a lot of it to still happen. I, I'm because, okay with that. I am yeah. I am okay with interchangeable. Yeah. Uh, no, just but my, not, my throwaway first thing. I, right. The rest of my thought was going to be, I know that's mostly a label difference. I have another thing. Okay. Um, yeah, because yeah. I, I think I, I agree with interchangeable because I think something had to happen to make the plot of those of those things like make sense 
and I can explain that after <laughs> if you need that's me a, to. No, no, that's okay. okay. There's, there's I think there wild... had to be something. I think it had to make it a whole thing, mm-hmm. but I don't think it had to be that thing. I could. I think it could have been. Uh, I'll tell you later. Yeah. No, I think it's okay. interchangeable. Just, yeah, there is a bit where the characters are trying to figure out whether that is just a distraction, like as it relates right. to certain or an other infiltration things. of somebody else. Yeah. Yes. Um. So yeah. So interchangeable. Uh, and then the enslavement. I I think this one is integral. I think. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it, it is um, the it is the the jump for the book. <laughs> yeah, like it it would be if what had happened after she's taken were different. I think it would be a right. distinction without a difference for it to be kidnapping instead. Like, right? It, it's. I mean, but kidnapping, it she is, could go home. She would have a home. True. Like, that's, that's true. different. If that had been the only part of it, because kidnapping did occur. But if it if it had, yes. No, I, I agree um, that without that piece, it would be a very different book. Um, and I know you haven't read it yet, but the third book couldn't happen if she didn't have those targets. <laughs> I was able to tell from the super duper wink, wink, nudge, nudge ending of the book of like oh and not even it's not even coy it's yeah. literally cool here's what we're going to do next and off we go like um anyway i will get to that later i do i do like the ending it just is very like robin reads 90s. it as very uh yeah very 90s 90s sci-fi uh to me see i read it as very babylon 5 which is 90s sci-fi. Which is 90s sci-fi, but the way you describe it makes it sound like super corny, cheesy action flick. <laughs> and that's not <laughs> how I read that scene at all. No, no, I, I do agree with you that it does uh, feel a bit like how characters from it, Babylon it's, 5 would it's Sheridan. It. It's Sheridan uh, <laughs> clapping uh, Garibaldi on the back and saying, now we go get him. <laughs> Welcome it's that. to the burn where we randomly compare things to Babylon 5. Look, um, it's just because it's the first <laughs> TV show that I remember watching and I <laughs> and I st- it's still my favorite doesn't mean. Uh no, but that it's all that's also true for me does mean cuz you know, anyway. Um okay, so is the trauma treated with care for the hmm. abandonment? <sighs> I mean, I it's it's feel... not an outright yes. I don't. I don't. It's not think an outright an, no. <laughs> I don't think enough. Like to the degree that the book views abandonment as, as a specific trauma, which I do agree that it does. Um, there are so many other things that are couched okay. more gently that at least. But that's not how this works. No, no, no. <laughs> okay. I, I'm trying. No, okay. Ember, I, I'm very granular. I, know. I I have to gauge things in a context. And every once in a while, you're like, wait, but just be general. Like, no, it's can't. it's not just be general. It's we can't say that it's it's more or less care just because something else is treated differently. I know. That's all no, I'm just, saying. I mean, okay. This is me calibrating. Okay. Um, Calibrating the thing. No, it does. I didn't think that it had a, as a topic. I didn't feel a lot of care in it as a topic Hmm. um i just not like it wasn't like randomly like bad or something it just um didn't there's there's hmm. i just i felt the care in approaching the topic of enslavement in a way that i just didn't with abandonment and doesn't mean there's nothing it's just okay not as much and so i i I don't know how to pick between not enough and enough. I think it is enough for these reasons. We, as a reader, don't dwell on the people who are gone. On screen, Sassanak has characters who try to help her, try to help her work through it, try to help her not be alone. Whether or not she takes them up on it is a different story. Uh, But they are trying and they're there for her. And she gets closure. With everyone who is gone. Okay, that's a good point. She does. Like, she is currently working on closure for her family. 
but she gets closure for insert character here <laughs> she gets yeah, closure yeah, yeah. for the 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 one who went and died she gets she doesn't get closure with her best friend but like in a way that feels like it makes sense because she can't get closure for her until she gets closure with her treatment as a enslaved person so. i mean she also practically the other person declares hey so by the way you're not going to get closure right um, but we know that at the time like it's not right. it's not a thing that we're sitting there in the book waiting like no we know we yeah, find out not, in the moment not waiting for a follow-up on that um okay okay i will accept your rating of enough um then the racism i do uh, think it- not enough me yeah i think it's not it's not an outright no yeah particularly with sassanac's treatment of these characters as our point of view character we we explicitly get evidence of her treating the situation with care but she's not the she's not the author yeah i i would say either no or not enough because once it had is using a version of racism that isn't real world racism there's there's that level to whatever degree that comparison applies but then after that it's an exploration of a bunch of ways that people are very racist um it just Mm. and like all all the way up like including but not limited to conspiracism like there there's just a bunch of stuff um okay does that so, does does that opinion hold for xenophobia in the book as well? Do you think they are the same thing? Um Yeah, I I think that I think that yes, I actually would um uh, no because if the Wefs had had a conspiracy against them, I would Okay, but it's, the but there are certain yeah. heavy world or worlds who in canon actually do, no, and no, the no, West just, don't. No. Sorry, I, I've lost track of what the topic of your sentence was. Uh, I I don't agree with your assessment. Is the topic? Okay, <laughs> I think that this book focuses more on the racism than the xenophobia, but still does talk about both. And of the two. There, it felt like there was less care on the racism, or at least a lot more specific examples of mm. it. Interesting. Um, but also, yeah. like, remember, I haven't read the other two books. I, um, I, I thought so this I book only. Know. I thought this book only that the racism had more care than the xenophobia. And granted, we didn't talk about the xenophobia. The reason I brought it up is because you had earlier. Uh, in this section compared the racism and xenophobia as an example saying like what if we just you know what if they swapped oh no i and i, I was had, i was I asking definitely... i was asking is do you think it is just real world with fantasy elements for both things because no, they're treated when, very when similarly said that, i was thinking of xenophobia um because they are they are treated almost exactly used- the same in this book. It is the same attitude toward two different groups of characters. No, I I, I agree on that. I, okay. I agree. So I'm I'm asking: Is the xenophobia then also racism, or do you think that it's just oh, oh. that's what I'm asking? Yes, I think there are elements of xenophobia in the racism against heavy worlders because at its heart, what's part of what's happening is that they're not thinking of them as human or at least not the same kind of human as the light worlders and so xenophobia is driving a lot of the racism in the story i meant the um, other way around that the, the okay like you could i uh maybe okay there, I, that's what i'm asking yeah. because if if you hold true with that through the whole thing then that makes yes. sense i just don't agree if that okay wasn't the same then i just i question <laughs> right no no that is okay. that's definitely how i'm thinking about it i understand if that's not how you're thinking of it right okay um, yeah. uh okay so you just think it's just straight up not enough yes okay i would argue that it is enough okay uh because now to be clear the way that our rating system works in this section specifically if one person thinks it is worse than the other person we put down the worst rating because mm-hmm. that's what this is about 
So I have written not enough in my sheet, <laughs> but I'm going to make my argument for enough. Okay. Um, we see examples of what could have been very bad racism. Mm. However, the, now the racism is, is there, but the parts of the story that we focus on and the character moments that we focus on with both our POV character who is our main character and also our POV character who is the heavy worlder in the moment uh, focus on the moments where they are protected and upheld and listened to and taken seriously and not allowed to have these things impact them over and over and over the character moments that we see are about an attempted threat that is then rebuffed by our main character or by the character being attacked in the moment so i think it's enough i think that the threat is there i think that if you identify with the characters who are being um threatened in the story then that can be impactful but i i think that the narrative over and over and over is this is not okay and it doesn't play out to harm these characters in the story explicitly it does not Mm, okay i think you've maybe talked me around to enough but i can't go with a yes that's fine it's not it's not a yes but it's not a story where we've had a yes at all so far (laughs) and we won't spoiler alert we will not for our (laughs) third topic this is this is not a story this is a story that deals with these topics in a way where they are on screen and present and tangible it's not gonna be a yes this is a story about death and slavery and war and explosions and murder like (laughs) this is not this is not a story about enough care taken about just care taken that's just not the kind of story it is but I, I don't I want to push back in general on the idea that because a trauma exists in our real world in a tangible way that is harmful to people in the real world on a mass scale, I want to push back on the idea that that automatically means that its existence in a story is just means that there's no care taken or not enough care taken. Like oh, that's no, not what that I, means. So I didn't mean to imply that that Okay. I didn't mean to convey that. I I don't Um, think you did. I just want to like outright say like if a trauma exists and it hurts and it's real, then it hurts and it's real. But that doesn't mean that our book did a did didn't take care of it. You know? Right. No, I, I do agree that that having a thing in fiction is not as bad as having the thing in real life. Well, it's not the same. <laughs> yeah, they're not yeah. the same. Yeah. So I, I my personal argument is it is it is enough because the the racism is a setup framework world building thing and when it threatens the plot it is explicitly rebuffed um and th- by the way the racist characters are not the point of view characters we get that's true explicitly yeah. not <laughs> okay i can agree with you on enough um i can hear the passion in your voice about this series and i'm like <laughs> ah teetering on the edge of spoiler but you're very good at not spoiling but Thank also you. moving on to next topic okay yes um all right so enslavement i think this is either enough because it's only 16 pages <laughs> of specific stuff right or not enough and that's the point and i'm not sure which one mm. of those it is um because i i think the way people keep bringing it up mm-hmm. um means it doesn't get to stay in the 16 pages and part of the point is that it can't um right uh i i don't actually know which way this pushes it but i have an observation okay um we don't actually hear about the treatment that would have been different than if she were just making choices by herself we, we have no clue what her sleeping conditions were. We don't know how much food she was given. We don't know how constrained she was, if she was tied up or not. Was I she beaten? Was she hurt? I examples and we should say enough. But I'm just saying we don't. We don't have these No, no, things. no. No, right. I'm right. saying the reader didn't have to... Be... Experience that. Yeah. Right. But my, my point is like most of her experience is education and 
her mental change. So I think I think it's not a no. And it's so. I mean, th- but you're right. It if- does pervade throughout the book. Yeah, there's a brainwashing or mindset change thing that is yeah. kind of like the most explicit thing after her initial capture. Right. Um but yeah, uh I think I would say enough cuz it kind okay. of assumes that you know that slavery is bad and the yeah. kinds of things that will happen to a slave. And then and it doesn't talk about them. It doesn't give you a list, but it doesn't let you think that this was actually mild just because it only showed the milder portions right. of her time. We we do get later in this book, we do get a couple of other characters that she tries to help. Uh, and we do mm-hmm. get a little bit more of a hint of their treatment, but like still, like not very much. Okay, then I think I would say enough. Okay, um, I'm cool with that. Yeah. Uh, all right, the moral directionality. I'm going to go ahead and say this is extremely clear. This is extremely clear. Uh, slavery bla- bad, S- death bad, slavery bad, 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 racism pirate, bad, xenophobia pirate, bad, <laughs> mistreatment <planets> bad. bad. <laughs> yeah. Lack um, of family bad and sad at the same time. Murder bad. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. She will agree with the main character. They are correct. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. It's it. There's it no has, even like gray. <laughs> yeah, there's no even like questionable. Is this the right thing or not? It's this one right. This action wrong. <laughs> you yeah, will, you will line up with this. I would say that for mo- almost all of the topics. Yeah, yeah. I, I off record. I have do. I do have like a thought about one thing, but like was not it something enough. we talked about or like it. It is. Okay. Um, yes. Okay. Uh, we at least talked about it in prepping for the record. Oh, I but it's not our. It's not one of our topics that we. It's not one of okay. our topics. Um, it it came up briefly. Uh, but anyway, like that one maybe sort of a thing isn't enough to change this from generally right. being like really really clear. It, it is as clear as you can be in a book where people have autonomy and make choices that you don't <laughs> necessarily agree with without them being condemnable morally. Um, I'd say well, but, but that's, th- and we don't even care about that in yeah, our no, moral we don't directionality. Care about that. that's, yeah. that's not what this rating is about. Um, anyway, uh, for the point of view, for the trauma and aftermath, for, so it's Sassanac the whole time. It, it's Sass- um, the camera's on Sassanac, but it's a third person. We don't get like yeah. We we get some other character viewpoints, like we get kind of sprinkled in. Oh, that's true. There are some sprinklings of some other people. It's it's Sassanac for most of the things, um, but then there are there's like a lot of the like really traumatic stuff happens in between scenes um, yeah especially um especially when like it skips large time chunks like it does uh when she's enslaved or or in the academy yeah. or le- less traumatically her time at the academy and um like the the gaps when we're checking in with her like once a decade for a little bit um or around that often anyway so it's her pretty much the whole time with occasionally somebody else, but still pretty focused on Sassanac. Yeah. And even All when right. we're on Sassanac, every once in a while, we get like a thought or a scene or an opinion mm-hmm. of somebody else. It's it's not Sassanac's thoughts the whole time. Yeah. Um, for the trope spotter, uh, this is apparently called, um, this trope is called Veganopia. Um, the particular version in this book is vegetarian. Mm-hmm. Generally speaking, people do not eat meat, but there's also some exceptions where like heavy worlders will eat meat and like certain colonies will eat fish because like they have a whole bunch of fish. But there's mm-hmm. there's generally uh like they they are definitely the exception. We just, you know, it's the kind of book where we run into a lot of the exceptions um for this but 
generally speaking, like their diet is plant based, except for people for whom that would literally be bad for their bodies. Uh, yeah. Now, to be fair, this is a space faring society. Yes. Plants right. are plants. Plants are not the it's, same. It's are easier. easier. <laughs> it's way easier to have a hydroponics facility yeah than to try and like keep chickens or something especially when you need the hydroponics for oxygen anyway you might as well eat it yeah like, you do yeah. not have something that's going to be using it up alongside you right so for for a lot of logistical reasons most people are vegetarian or perhaps even vegan um if they're not like getting milk products in space right um, it, it, it is one of those where like i i would i could very easily make an argument for the 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 scientific needs turned it into a social norm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Or or the social norm just made more sense in space. You know, either one. No, it 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 definitely like it it, it fits with the world and it's fun. It just I I picked this one partly because I like that the trope name for it is veganopia. <laughs> um, it's like okay, yeah, that's pretty right. good. Yeah, uh, good job. Um. All right. What was your favorite non-traumatic thing about the book? Oh, boy. Um, can you go first? <laughs> okay. Um, I had a thing I said I liked earlier, and then it has fallen oh, no. out of my brain. Um, I don't explicitly remember. It's like, ah, uh, what? Okay. I I like... Okay, there, there's a little moment where... Um, I don't know if this is necessarily my favorite thing, but I, I did enjoy this. There's this moment where Sassanak meets this alien for what she thinks is the first time, and it's an oh, alien The Slee? Who, yeah, the Slee, where in their adult form, they're kind of like... Um, they're large and stationary and installed within a ship in a tank and they're what makes faster than light travel possible because like they're doing the calculations and stuff and they're so their species is stationary but you know in cooperation with humans and other aliens they get moved about in tanks i don't know what they do when they're on their own we see them in conjunction with humans <laughs> and others but sassanak learns that she's actually met this one before um and had like bumped into its tank uh, when it was installed somewhere else and was much smaller and earlier in its life cycle. Uh, it was just, a, it was a fun moment, partly because, like, narratively, we didn't see the first reaction unless I really missed, first no. interaction, uh, unless I really missed it. We we um, kind of do, but it's, like, it's super tiny and you don't really, there's yeah. not, like, there's not, like, a reason to note it. Yeah. Uh, and then later it's like, oh, I, no, like, Actually, we have met before. I would remember someone who tripped me, or like the yeah, who apologized, having, apologized for apolog- bumping into me, apologized for bumping into me. Yeah, um, so that that was fun. I I liked that one because it's also the kind of moment that like says a lot about Sassanac and about the society. And yes. Yeah. Oh yeah, because if no one else is apologizing, yeah, um, but Sassanac does. Like it, it's definitely this like subtle characterization for both Sassanac and the Slee at the same time. So that was nice. Uh, it also made me appreciate way more like later on when it like it mentions the Slee and the ship like doing the calculations and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, because it it's like, no, this is like a, a person who has a job uh, who is doing their job in the thing the whole time so that no one dies. Um, anyway, I like the Slee. <laughs> Um, what is yours? Uh, this is hard. I uh, my favorite non-traumatic thing. I'm not even sure. <laughs> this is weird. I don't usually struggle with books I like. New or new or old books that I've read before. Um, I think my favorite non-traumatic thing is the weft biology Mm -hmm. i like the idea uh my mental picture of them is like octopus kind of (laughs) octa octopus like 
And then they, I, I like the idea that they are able to like hologram project. And I love, I love the concept of being able to fight and then just shift the way your arm is structured so that then they're just not holding you anymore. <laughs> I think that's cool. Mm-hmm. In, in general, I just think the, the weft world building is cool. Yeah, because I can't picture stuff, if the description of them goes on too long, it functionally is like a blur on the page for oh, me. Yeah. Which is, <laughs> yeah, which is why I'm, like, not as excited about the weft as, like, you clearly are. <laughs> I, I you, like Anyone weft. can tell from the rest of the discussion. I'm I like, like, yeah, I like the slee, too, but I, I, yeah. I like the weft. I, I, I don't know if we've said this on the podcast before. I am a martial artist, and I, I like combat. Um, I'm also looking into German longsword. I don't only do like unarmed west eastern stuff um but i i love combat and i like book descriptions of things that work in combat yeah yeah no so, i i did I like appreciate it. that detail um but but yeah no for me uh tank is way easier to mentally deal right with than, <laughs> than whatever the weft have going on <laughs> tank um, is better than shape-shifting octopus for sure yeah, especially when my brain didn't even offer up octopus. It was just oh. like, oh, those sure are a lot of descriptions um, <laughs> that I can't do anything with. Uh, have fun. Uh, anyway, uh, thank you so much for joining us. Our episodes are now bi-monthly. Uh, the version where it's twice, not where it's with every other. Um, just to settle the which bi is it debate. Uh, yeah, so... We will catch you later. Thank you so much for joining us. All music used in this podcast was created by Nicole as Heartbeat Art Co. and is used with permission. Our transcriptionist is Heather. Follow her on Twitter at MamaDragon20. We're proud members of the Certain Point of View Network. Find all the CPOV shows at www.certainpov.com. You can contact us on Twitter at Books That Burn or by email at Books That Burn at Yahoo.com. Please consider leaving us a tip at Kofi.com slash Books That Burn or becoming a monthly supporter on Patreon.com slash books that burn all patrons get access to our upcoming book list bonus content including the second half of all interviews and will receive a one-time shout out to get updates on our written reviews recent episodes and newly completed transcripts subscribe to our fortnightly newsletter at buttondown.email slash books that burn you can find us on apple Podcasts, pandora spotify or wherever you get your podcasts please leave us a review wherever you're listening this helps people to find the show thanks for listening we'll be back in two weeks